Welcome. So I'm sitting here in the classroom. Uh, I come in during the summer and uh, make math videos uh, for my courses for me to be teaching throughout the next year. And I was looking into what is the isolated variable. And we think of isolate, isolation, right? I am very isolated right now. There's very, very few people that are in the building. And I am just alone in my classroom making videos, talking to you, hopefully people watching. Um, and so thinking about that, I am alone, right? I am isolated. There's nobody around me. And that's exactly the thinking that I want you to think about when we're looking into a variable, taking a variable, isolated. So when we're solving equations, what the main important thing that we want to be thinking about is trying to get that variable alone, right? The variable is not a people person. It wants to be by itself. And we want to get it by itself on its on the side, on one of the sides of the equal sign. So you can see an equation, x equals 3. Well, the variable is by itself, right? It's on the left side. That's cool. It could be on the right side. It could be 3 equals x. But the variable is by itself. Because when we're solving an equation, we want the variable, the value of the variable, to be equal to a value. Um, and that's when we know we have the solution. So when I have 3x my, or let's do something simple. You know, 4x equals 16. I want to get the variable by, on, by itself. So we go back to our applying our inverse operations. You know, what is happening to the variable right now? The variable is being multiplied by 4. So I want to undo that. I want to isolate the variable. Because when I divide by 4, what happens is 4 divided by 4 goes to 1 times x equals 16. And you can say, well, there's still a 1 times x. But there's always a 1 times x. Because 1 times x is just going to equal x. So therefore, I can write it now, make sure you divide on both sides, as just x equals 4. So it's, when we're looking into these, we want to use our inverse operations. Um, again, multiplying, dividing, dividing, and multiplying are inverse operations. Why? Because th what they do is they divide or multiply to 1. And 1 times your variable is just going to be your variable, which now leaves it um, alone. The, another example would be, you know, our, let's do x plus 5 equals 25. Now you can see my variable is being added by 5. So I want to subtract. I want to I undo it being added by 5 so it can be by itself. So I, sub, so I subtract 5 on both sides. Because 5 minus 5 gives me 0. Well, anything plus 0 is just that anything, right? x plus 0 is just going to be x. So even though I can write in the 0, we don't have to. We just want to write the variable by itself. So when we're looking into isolating a variable, basically what we want to do is undo what is happening to the variable. And we're going to do um, you know, a whole bunch of problems, multi-step and distributive property and so forth. And those are kind of a different animal. But the basic thing that we want to do whenever we even have a very complicated problem is get it down to its two-step equation. right? Combine like terms, apply distributive property, everything else, but get it to its two-step equation. Because then we're only dealing with two operations that we have to undo. And now you can see I have two operations I need to undo. Well, we always undo addition and subtraction first. Then we undo multiplication by dividing and x equals 1 third. So you can see, from having a variable with a lot of friends, I undid operations until I got the variable by itself. So there it goes, ladies and gentlemen. That is what it, what it means to isolate, as well as the idea of what we do to isolate the variable so therefore we can get it by itself. Thanks. <laughs>